recording here. Yo, yo, yeah. yo, Joe. Joe, if you What's come up? on, Joe, if you're calling on Skype, I can I can actually put you on Skype. It's like my own form of uh, blab. Hey, Trell, and thanks for joining us. All these people popping on. This is great. Nice. We want we want to talk about real estate. We want to talk about beer. I'm big on beer. Hawaii, talk and we about want to that. talk about Hawaii. Also, okay. also, I want to talk about the mindset a little bit. The excuse, oh, you know, because oh, I just got off a, a look relevant. Who just came on, Chris and Carrie. Oh, what's up? Chris and Carrie, hello. Look, I'm doing yeah, my I'm Hawaii gonna... stuff. <laughs> Can't even do it. But yeah, I was talking about the difference. I mean, I just come off a coaching call now of one of my um, clients. One guy's got four, what, what, there's one guy who's got 45 grand worth of deals going through pounds, 45 k is going through, and um, another client. Some clients, they haven't got that. And I said, what was the difference? So I believe what Tony Robbins talks about, success leads clues. So what's the difference? One guy said, I do whatever it takes, I speak to people. The other said, which I appreciate their honesty, but failure leads clues as well. And he wasn't getting any results. And um, he would literally had, they, they, they hadn't got any results. But guess what, Claude? They what? hadn't spoke to any sellers. They, hadn't got on the, they didn't get on the phone so they couldn't make the money. And the person, the people I teach and what I want to talk about, and maybe we can just go back and forth what Did you found. Did you see, I, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Did, uh, the Mr. Hawaii, the Mai Tai King himself, Joe McCall, just joined us. Oh, really? Is he with us on Skype now? He's on Skype, and, he's, and, he, and I'm also broadcasting on, uh, um, on Periscope here, the three amigos. Awesome. But yeah, and the different set, one guy, I think, 45K, is like, what, 60 odd thousand dollars um, it, from option deals. No money down, no credit. Others haven't done it. And the reason why, one does whatever it takes to speak to sellers. The other person didn't speak to sellers. So, I mean, what do you find there? What do you think the difference is there, Claude? What would you say? Why do you think one is making money? What, one is happy to speak to sellers and they feel comfortable and one isn't? What, what would you say the difference is? I, I call it hustle, DNA, hunger. Do you have the hunger? I'll tell you right now, and Joe was talking about this brilliantly on his Periscope earlier today. Uh, maybe you were touching on it too. We, we may be, and maybe we're part of the problem in all honesty. We focus so much on learning the strategies and the paperwork and all the applications and everything when really we have to get back to what it says on behind me here. Do we give good phone? Do we pick, you were talking about it. Do we pick up the phone and talk to people? Do we communicate? Did you guys freeze up? I think I lost. I think we all froze up here. Oh, darn, darn, darn. Oh, it's all, you're all going here. I'll see if you guys can come back on. You guys back, Tom? Yeah, Claude, I'm right here. Oh, okay, good. A little technical difficulty, and we lost, and we lost Tom there. I, let's see if I can pull, if he can, if we can get him back on. Do you see my video, Claude? No, I just see your high school prom black and white picture there. <laughs> okay, I'm back in the room now. Sorry, I got cut out. Can okay. You see me? And, um, you know, you asked me a great question. Uh, are you driving with that little girl in your car with Jewel? Yes, I am, actually. Hi, Jewel. Hi. Hi. And hey, Joe. How's it going? <laughs> Tom and I are on Skype, as you know, with you, and then I'm also broadcasting on Periscope. I am so glad you guys are – I'm enjoying your little broadcast there, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I like doing them too. Um, hey, listen, I'm going to – I'm gonna. I'm on my iPad right now. I'm going to call right back on my phone, so I'll be right okay, back. Okay, cool. All right. But I was talking about we – were, we were talking about – you said about hustle, Claude. Hustle, I think baby. that's huge. You know, just just get, getting into it and just talking to people. People have problems in real estate. We all love real estate. All I have to do is talk to enough people who want to buy, want to sell, want to invest. Find out if they have a problem. Can I be the your Can I be your doctor? Maybe I have a solution. Maybe I'm just a good listener. Maybe I can do the deal with you or introduce you to somebody who has the money to do the yeah, yeah. deal. Or maybe I want to do the deal. Or I can consult with you. Um, the bottom line is, are you being proactive? Yeah, that's it, proactive. And people's excuses they make is, I don't know everything yet. You're never going to know everything yet. You can never know everything yet. I'm you learning every day, man. Yeah, it's the same, man. It's the same, you know, when I was at the event, I learned loads and I learned loads from experience. You learn the most from experience. You don't learn it from intellectually reading books and watching videos. Because I say to people, I say, great, watch my stuff, learn the training, the videos. 
But then do that. But you know what? I talk about Grant Cardone, what we're speaking about, um, Claude, as well. Ten, you know, 10x. I, I love well, Grant. I love Grant. He's cr- <laughs> Grant makes me laugh every day. He's so entertaining. Or 20x, just doing, taking more action in the right direction. It's not rocket science, it's business, creative, real estate, or properties. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. It's, it's you know, knowing what you want and then moving towards it, refining your skills. But most people, I don't think it's the skills. I think it's the fear. Paralyzes people. Absolutely paralyzes people. And they make excuses. So I think, what do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to look at ways how I can help. I don't know, I just masterminding of you guys now. What have you thought to, to, to break through you know, people's barriers? Because you can give them all the tools, but some people, they just can't break through. You know, I don't know what you found. Um, to me, the epiphany, the revelation was sales, the million-dollar skill. Um, I've been in real estate a long time. What's the difference between, is it the guy who has the most knowledge, uh, the most leads, or the person who gives good phone, who gets on the phone, calls up enough people, has these good adult-to-adult conversations, just comfortable. My job is to teach people how to get comfortable on the phone, ask the right questions. Mm. You master the power of emotional persuasion, the EQ. And the magic will always happen if you speak to enough people in real estate. You may not have all the answers, but we can find them later, or we can learn them as we do them. Okay, I'm the guy who jumps out of the airplane, enjoys the free fall, and then I say, yeah. and then basically I say, oh shit, did I put on a parachute? You know, <laughs> uh, okay. The thing is, yeah, yeah. you, you got to talk in. to people. You know, if you're sitting home waiting for your virtual assistant to send you leads or for the phone to ring or for some, it the, it won't happen. You have to be proactive. Yeah, you have to be hungry, and people, and you have to instill in people your belief that your confidence that uh, you love yeah. this business and you have solutions for them. It's a balance of it. I think it's a balance of having systems and then getting the right leads coming in so people have the confidence. But it's people just being <laughs> proactive, especially when you're getting into it. I can remember when I started, like, I literally, I knew, okay, 10 minutes on the original call. If I can, everyone was saying do three to five sellers a day. I said, I'll do 20 just because I wanted it so bad. And I think that's a defining factor when you want it bad. It's like, um, I don't know, that motivational speaker, when you want it as bad as you want to breathe. You know that video or something like, talks about that. But they're the people, it's funny how all successful people have to talk about the same thing and the same traits. And uh, what do you think it is? I think it's, it's falling like in book. love, Tom. It's like fall, when you meet that beautiful girl, that, what, you know, and your heart goes pitter pat. What's the, you go on that first date and everything is right. What's the first thing you think about? No funny answers. <laughs> I was going to say it. What, <laughs> what was you going to say it? <laughs> um, you, when am I going to well, see her again? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're, you're in, in yeah, you're, you're connected. To that. And that's the same as the phone. I remember when I first started, I was like, this isn't so bad. And you get momentum. You want to call more people. But it's that, it's that initial fear where people don't break through. Like the two guys, A and B, one guy's got closing on great deals. He's happy. He's flying. I mean, he loves it. Other people, it's like, well, I haven't broke through. I can't speak to sellers. Or I spoke to 20 sellers and they all said no. And um, But then the next one, it's like when success is so success is so close, like you just go one more over that barrier and it's there. I and mean, we see it all the time. I mean, UK, US, it's exactly the same thing. Um, but are you there, Joe? Let's see. I don't. I think Joe. Yes. Has, yes. Oh, he is. I am here, and uh, I don't know why my video is not working. But um, I'm on to, my phone. You have to up, update. You might have to update your application on your uh, phone, there, Joe. Yeah, I do. But anyway, I I really appreciate what you guys are saying. It makes a lot of sense. I would add that uh, you know you you could be the best salesman in the world, and and you could be the best closer. But unless you have people to talk to, then oh, yeah. it's not going to do you any good, right? So that's why I say we're not in the real estate business. We're in the sales and marketing business. And maybe it's marketing and sales. For me in my brain, marketing is what gets the phone to ring. It, what's, it gets what, it's what gets people to call you. Yeah. And sales then is knowing how to close them. So you can't have one without the other, right? Yeah, it's huge. And, and then the more marketing you do – then the, the, the more leads you're going to get and you could be horrible at sales. And as long as you're trying, you know, as long as you're picking up that phone and talking to people, 
then you can still do deals. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of having the, you know, having your leads coming in consistently, good leads, quality leads, and then and then having a skill set to turn them leads into deals. And, you know what Claude what we talk about, all of us talk about, you know, giving good phone what you talk about Claude and just becoming good at sales because anyone can learn it, I think, if they're willing to learn. But then I think there's something behind that which is a burning desire to do whatever it takes. And that's different because some people are great at sales, but they don't do whatever it takes. They just think, okay, our, 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 they don't because they're in the comfortable jobs and they don't have to do it. Um, I find the best people to get the best results and who I look up to, they've had to do it. They have to get the success. It has to work. It's not, oh, I'll, I'll try it. You know, It has to work. I think that's the missing link not a lot of people talk about is the hustle there. The hustle. How about the, can we say the fun word? Do you guys ever experience fun in this business? How much fun yeah. it is to, to, you got you know, you guys talked brilliantly in Hawaii about uh, traveling uh, Spain and God, Tom, you never sit still for, you're never in one place for more than two weeks. Um, and jo, <laughs> Joe, you're, a, you're, you're an honorary Czech Republican, you know, uh, they're probably going to change your passport soon. You're over there so much, you know, and we get to we get to travel, meet great people, have fun. And and I think it's what are, if you're going to have a hobby, how about the hobby of making money? Yeah, but that's what I'm so passionate about. That's what I'm like at times. I'm like, dude, just pick the phone up, call the leads, do the marketing, invest the money into marketing. So I see marketing is not an expense. It's an investment. For, your, for to grow a business. That's why I love, that's what I'm talking about fun. That's huge because travel this business, I, don't, I think it's the best business in the world. I love teaching, consulting, and and um, information business. But alongside that, the real estate deals business and the creative real estate is just unbelievable. And uh, I want more people to realize it and it, it, to click like it clicked with us. And that's why we're here exactly. teaching because it, it clicked. But what do you think, Joe, about that? How, what do you think with your most successful clients? What do they? How do they think? Well, let me read you an email I got today from one of my coaching clients, and uh, I will keep his identity secret. And um, this is a person who has an MBA, and I am almost i almost have an MBA. I have an uh, engineering degree. I'm one class away, actually one and a half classes away from getting my MBA. And uh, this nice. person, when, before they signed up, was uh, analyzing every dot and tittle in my coaching agreement and had some very detailed, specific questions. And I started rolling my eyes and thinking, uh-oh, he's one of those guys. And I can say that because that was me, right? Over-analytical of every little detail, has to understand steps seven and eight before it starts doing steps one and two. And so I did my first deal group coaching call today. <clears throat> it's a deal. I started a small group, 12 folks, um, who only focus is marketing. And doing and talking to sellers, right? So <clears throat> it's eight calls. You have to split your first two deals with me. And every weekly call that we do with the group, you have to report on your numbers. Everybody has a scorecard. You got to report on your numbers. How much marketing did you do that week? How many sellers you talked to? How many offers you made? And then after you report on your numbers, and it's visible there for everybody to see, I'm putting it on a big spreadsheet. Everybody can see it. Then we talk about specific deals. We're only talking about specific deals. And I'm telling them, guys, no yeah butters or what ifers allowed. Right? <laughs> no what ifers, no yeah butters. It's okay to have questions, but it's only okay to have questions after you, while you're taking forward action. Practical. So, right, right. So one of the folks in the group, um, he told he he uh, was on and he had to leave early, and I was wondering like why did he leave early? And I was wondering maybe he was a little embarrassed because he hasn't gotten his marketing plan or a scorecard done. So he sent me an email, and I'll I'll try to be a little vague here. Um, Joe, I'm I'm brand new, so I don't have the marketing scorecard yet. I'm trying to figure out how to set up Podio. I'm trying to figure out how to find the contracts and get the general business stuff organized before I start mailing out a bunch of stuff and then not knowing what to do with it all. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh man, I, I I replied back in a friendly, nice way. You're focusing on all the wrong things. What are you doing? Forget Podio. Forget contracts. Forget all the general business stuff. That's all completely irrelevant and useless if you don't have any leads. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I'm partnering with you guys on these deals. 
And I've, I'm telling them, listen, just don't worry about the contracts. If you're partnering with me on the deal, I'll take care of all that with you. I'll walk you through that stuff. But so many people get paralyzed. Either it's fear of success or feel your fear of failure. They're just, you know, they feel like they have to get their business cards set up and their websites built and the contracts all understood and, and know how to estimate comps and repairs and, um, you know, figure out the, the how to get a bunch of buyers and get Podio set up. Listen, <laughs> and that is, that's going to be the, the key to failure if you start focusing on that stuff. Did you ever notice that people uh, who are real motivated, real intense in the beginning, always seem to find deals, do deals in the beginning, the first, and then they seem to simmer down a little bit? Have you ever seen that happen? Yeah, yes, for sure, hundred percent. Why? Do, why does that happen sometimes? Is it yeah, because well, why? What's I think, your take? I think it's momentum. I think this business, if you're consistent, you win. In business, is the consistency. Like even if you're not good on the phone now, but you consistently go and get better and better and better, or you find someone. Like I said today in our call, uh, who's doing deals? Five, like three or four people put a hand up. I'm doing loads of deals. Um, who's not done deals? Okay, well, you. I said you got two decisions. You either Get on the phone and if you commit to speaking to five sellers a day, you write it down, you commit like your it's life de- life depends on it if you want to make it work because it, it it does almost like your lifestyle um, or you find someone you partner up with someone that will work the phones and um i I think it's consistency at the end of the day I think you know often a tangent there, but I think a lot of it is consistency because you can get better on the phone. And it's consistency of marketing. You put postcards out, I didn't get any leads come back, I didn't get any calls. Okay, well, tweak it. Have you thought about Google ads? Have you thought about Facebook ads? No? Well, I don't understand how it works, Tom. There's YouTube. <laughs> you know, there's YouTube. There's ridiculous amounts of information. Is that Frank Kern said, the information? You know, I probably won't say it on here, but <laughs> it's, um, you know, people are just being wusses, essentially. They're, they're being, they're being, they're, they're scared to death. Of, of right. Well, here's here's the best piece of advice I can give you, everybody listening to this. Okay, and I'll, I'll use the cleaned up version. Yeah, because <laughs> it is. Okay. Stop, stop effing around and stop being a sissy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so true. Maybe Claude, Claude can drink on. Uh, he can drink beer on his uh, Periscope call, so maybe he can cuss. But that, that's right. What is your favorite beer, by the way? Because that was part of our description here. Uh, I like you know, Guinness. One of, I like yeah, Irish Guinness. 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 I'm not one a massive of my beer favorites. Fan. One of my favorites is um, Newcastle. Newcastle's a good beer. That bra- bra- brown ale or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I, I uh, there's like a wine. there's a beer <laughs> I had in uh, Ireland, and I've seen it here. It's called Smittix. It looks like Smithwicks, but they say Smittix there. Tom, Smittix. maybe you know that beer. I. My my favorite beer. It's aptly named. It's from uh, Stone Brewery. I'm going to have it tonight. I think on my Periscope. Um, it's called Arrogant Bastard. You know, if the beer fits, <laughs> drink it. <laughs> perfect, a perfect beer for Claude. Isn't it the perfect name? Oh my gosh, <laughs> it is the best beer in the world. It's four dollars a bottle. It's made by Stone Brewery. It's a dark red, delicious, hoppy. Uh, liquid substance of joy. Tom, you're British, so uh, you're still learning about beer. Um, <laughs> beer is, um, I prefer, I'm more of a wine guy myself. You're a wine guy. Yeah, I'm going to a nice wine bar tonight, actually, in Austin. Austin's great. I love, loving Austin. It's so entrepreneurial. Go into a cafe, everyone's, you know, got their online businesses and stuff. It's awesome, man. Um, Great, great, great place. It's a, Loving oh, Austin. I love Texas. Texas is a, good, a great place to do business. You can. How long are you going to be there? I'm here for about three months, actually. Three months? That, that's an eternity for you, man. Yeah, I know. But, uh, but I'm back to London, and I'm back to London next week for a week uh, just to do a few things, and I'm back over. And I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to go Hawaii, back to um, Kauai, to hike the Nepali coast in March mid-March but that's great I couldn't do it without this business as I could keep saying it but I couldn't if I, I don't know I'd probably be cleaning sweeping floors or something I seriously I don't know what I, or waiter I, my other job is being a waiter if I didn't get into this business so I, I don't know why people don't take the action they just don't want it enough bad enough to be I honest was, I was the, a bartender I was a bartender for a while and oh really you'd be you good know, bartender. Uh, yeah it was uh <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I've had all kinds of jobs. I used to sell tools off the back of a truck. Wow. Um, all kinds of things. Joe, where are you going? Uh, now that you're back in St. Louis, where are you going next? Well, I'm going to San Diego in uh, two weeks for a wedding, so that doesn't count. Oh, gosh. You're finally getting married with those four kids, huh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that Claude, maybe maybe we could have a coffee or something or a beer. Oh, give me a but, call. Um, we'll go out for lunch, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna my my half sister is getting uh, married in Hamul. They're gonna have a wedding ceremony. I on love Hamul. Oh, I know Hamul. Hamuls are great. Yeah, yeah. Hamul gets hot, man. Bring your short. Bring your Hawaii shirt and shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So be in San Diego, and um, I don't know where we're going after when, that. When you go to Hamul, when you come back, stop at the Olympic Training Center. It's not far from there. Yeah, I've heard about that. It's really, really nice. Uh, on there. I'm here in San Diego for a couple weeks and then back to Colorado. And uh, I'm going to see if I can sneak away to Florida for a week or two also uh, nice. on this. I just take my little iPad. I use my little iPad <laughs> Mini 4, my little uh, iPhone. And, man, I'm in bed. That's all I took to Hawaii, by the way, guys. You know, my iPhone and my uh, iPad. That was all the equipment I used. So you need yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, um, I'm looking forward to Spain in May. I've got an event in Spain. That's going to be awesome. Um, flip remotely event in a uh, in a villa in uh, Marbella. Just an island in Spain. Yes, yeah, amazing. I'm going to be excited for that. Flipping deals in like a nice in a mansion as well. Just just living, <laughs> just a lifestyle business, man. It it really it really is, and, it, and it's so much fun. And yeah. don't you love being overwhelmed? Are you guys as overwhelmed as I am sometimes? <laughs> yeah. I, I've, had, I've been up since 6 a.m. with back-to-back -back calls today. But I like it. It gets me. I'm in flow. Because I, I don't think – I teach how to work less no more. But there's nothing wrong with – if you're working with things you love, if you're, work, if you're taking action with things you love, then it's not work. Do you know what I mean? I don't really want to sit around and do nothing. Um, I mean, in my wholesaling business, I don't do anything in it, but coaching, I, you know, I want to keep busy. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you guys think about that, but I like doing things. You know what was the best thing we did in Hawaii, uh, Joe and Tom? You remember when the three of us were on the front of the stage talking about lifestyle and, and all the different things we do? Do you remember that part, yeah. Joe? Oh, awesome. yeah. I, I thought that was the best part of the whole three days. <laughs> That was yeah. great. And it's teaching it information really of it. I think, yeah, in the information business, whoa, that's a different that's a different kettle of fish, to be honest, to consulting business. I mean, I've already got three ideas. You know, this, this year I'm creating a software, new brand, new business there. Um, you know, it's just the same principles, though, sales and marketing. It's exactly yeah. the same. There's no difference. It's just a different product. Yeah. Very I, uh, good. Go ahead. Hey, I, I got to get going. I'm just going to say goodbye here. Bye-bye, Joe. See you on cool, man. Periscope. Take care, Joe. See ya. See you on right, Periscope Tom. later, man. See you later, buddy. All right. See you guys. See you <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Did you know uh, Joe was in the airport? Joe was on the same flight uh, with me. Oh, really? Uh, from Hawaii to San Diego. And then I think he had to take two or three other flights to find his way back to St. Louis. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, on it. But that overwhelm you said, it's, it keeps you on the edge, doesn't it? What do, you, what do you like about that? I don't know. It's like there's something about it, isn't it? When people, some people take it, they let it consume them. Some people thrive on it. They ride that wave. What do, how do you deal with it? I, I, I love it. I, I, um, <laughs> I love, I, I actually thrive. I go a little crazy sometimes, but I actually love when the business is nuts. When I mean yeah. nuts is I've got, all these deals, all these things to do, all these phone calls to return, contracts to fill out, emails to get back, and the business is getting that this this tsunami kind of hum, you know? Yeah. And and it's less like, oh God, I love it because I, I've had crummy jobs, I've had crummy bosses. To me, to be able to work from home on a computer and 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 make an honest buck, a really good buck, or pound, as you would say. I yep. mean, that to me, the, the uh, man, that's, I hate to be corny. It's living the dream. Yeah. There's no better. Yeah, it is. And you can work from anywhere. Yeah. That's a great thing. You only need the laptop, the phone. You can literally, and people, when they hear it, when they're working the jobs, it's like, it's, it's way out there, but it's real, isn't it? It's true. You, Joe's doing it. You're doing this. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other people are doing it. Yeah. But, but then there's millions working that corporate job as a slave, 
you know, and, and going at it. And all you need to do is change approach slightly. Here, I'll show you. I, I love to, you know, when I'm on the phone, I'm, I use Skype a lot when I do my training and stuff with people. Yeah. I like to show them the paperwork, not just tell them. I like to actually show them. So the other day, we're going to a restaurant in Coronado, this lovely island. We have a friend's house there. I get a phone call forwarded to my cell phone. It's a lady on the phone. She's got a deal uh, here in the States. Uh, she needs a lot of help. I charge for consulting to help her set up a lease purchase on it. Okay. Uh, I charge kind of like what a realtor would charge to um, yeah. not to represent her, but to advise her on the deal. And um, to make a long story short, here's half of a $13,000 uh, deposit just for helping her do the deal. That's, nice. See the date and everything is on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, and here's another, where's another one? Heck, there's another one around here somewhere. I mean, this is just in the last 24 hours, yeah. more money than most people make in a year or years. And that sounds like bragging, and I don't That's want that bragging. to make it sound it's not like bragging. that. It's not bragging, it's a reality. It, it, and people need to know it so they're inspired by it. Well, thank you for saying it like that because I hate braggers. Uh, the thing about it, it took me a long time to get here, and I've made mistakes like everybody had and, and everything. But the thing is to now have that control by just know, you know how I, you know my definition of success. Did you you remember that? I go over it again. Go You've for got it. Many. Basically, take everything away. Take it all away from me. You know, strip me naked, throw me outside with a little bit of health and intelligence, and get me to a cell phone, and I will be back on top, starting from nothing in thirty days or less. And to me, that truly is success. Yeah. Because yeah, you can always lose stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Can always, you know. You can always you, lose, but you, you can never lose. That. It's that creativity that it's it's that knowing, isn't it? That that wall. That is that is that creativity in you that created the success. It's like I always heard: you never let success define you. You define the success. Yeah. Because you all, you created it, and most people. Yeah, and that when you have that, I know what you mean. I, I feel the same. If I, I mean, I've had days. You know, back in the early days when I wasn't being smart of my money, I had that. I was like, I'm back to square one. I've got to go back to the basics, and that was picking up the phone, getting the leads in, and working it, and being consistent with it, and enjoying it, and finding that flow, I think, of doing it. You find that rhythm yeah. and um, consistency, and uh, you know, everyone's got their own techniques, but at the end of the day, you, hustle is not a technique. It's just, it's a, you just have to hustle with it. At the beginning, you do. You, you got to find your passion, you know, that product or service. You and I chose real estate, okay, because everybody needs a place to win, uh, to live. It, you know, it's it's a basic commodity. Then yeah. you've got to find, develop or adapt to the marketing, and marketing is changing so much right now. We're on, we're simultaneously on Periscope, Meerkat, and we're using Skype to record this. I mean, all this great yeah. technology for marketing. And then you've got to be um, you got to be pretty sharp, uh, honing your skills in sales, communication with people, and, and these are the three th three magic pills you need uh, to put it all together to make it work. And anybody, little things and like public speaking, public speaking, getting out of the comfort zone. Maybe we could do a periscope soon and just public speaking. Oh, oh, oh God, man, you're talking to the number one public speaker chicken shit here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. I I'll tell you what, I, I would get nervous in front of two nuns and a Boy Scout, Tom. Um, yeah. uh, you, you, it was really one of the hardest challenges for me. Oh, man, I sound like I'm drinking early here. Um, one of the hardest things for me to do is learn to do public speaking. Mm. It was scary as hell, and I think a lot of people feel like that. But you yeah, know I, what? Did. I knew if I wanted to make my business grow, I had to get in front of real estate clubs and groups and presentations and and all kinds of things. And uh, so I studied successful public speakers. I read books on it. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was mentored by great public speakers. That was the price I was willing to pay to get over this fear. Yeah. And once you get over it, it's a natural flow, isn't it? And that's, that's the fear. It's feared more than death, public speaking. Yeah. There's a fear of rejection, the fear of not being good enough. And that's the same, I guess, like speaking to sellers and making them calls is public speaking. And, you know, you're behind the phone, but... Is still that fear, isn't it? And I think if when people just get over it and they do it, it's like they you know feel the fear and do it anyway. You just do it I, because every, everyone looks at the gurus and they think they don't have fear. We and have anxiety and yes. fear like everyone else. It's a load of rubbish that is because you just you just but they just do it consistently 
week in, month month in, year out, and it's uh, I love it, man. That's why we're here, and that's why we can travel and do it. And hopefully, it, it, hopefully, someone just listens to this and it clicks. Yeah. And I had a message before we wrap up and stuff yeah, like that. I had a to. message from someone on Facebook, and um, he message he come, you know, he said I read your book, the free book, and he goes, you know, I'm looking to make like thirty thousand dollars in the next six weeks. I love this business. I'm going to quit my job. Because I come across your material, I'm like, man, that's why I do it. You know, the money's great, but that's a, a huge reason why I do it. It's amazing. It really is. Well, you know, you're on the right track, and you and you're so comfortable in front of an audience. It's a, you're what we call a natural at it. Guys like me had to work at it. <laughs> okay, and now today, the funny thing is, I actually I don't tell anyone this. I know no one's listening, but <laughs> um, the th- a lot of people are actually listening. Um, the one thing is. I actually enjoy it now. Yeah, and that's why you're so good at it. You know, I, I you enjoy I, it. I actually love sharing knowledge and getting a group interacting. And you remember the one thing before we let you go? Remember the selling the uh, water bottle in the very beginning? Were you there for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that was so much fun for me. Yeah. And we opened up a bottle of champagne when they finally closed me and everything like that. Were you there for the champagne? <laughs> I don't think I was there for the champagne. I think I went out for that. But I remember the bottle and the t-shirt as well. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm going to let you go. Fun. Yeah. I'm going to let you go, sir. Good speaking. Thank I, you. Let's do it again, very man. very generous with your time. Thank you. Take care, Claude. Bye. Take care.